Welcome to a tour of the Ultrix server. Today we will cover the components that make up the architecture, their roles in the architecture, and the ways to scale the Ultrix server architecture. To understand the architecture, let's run through a diff some of the different components that exist inside the server. The first one is the designer. The Ultrix designer is a Windows software application that provides an intuitive drag and drop user interface for users to create repeatable workflow processes. Users can use these workflows to blend and enrich data from a range of sources, perform advanced analytics, and quickly produce results that can be easily shared with others. The designer executes the workflows through a local instance of the Ultrix engine. Alternatively, in the Ultrix server deployment, the schedule interface component with the Ultrix designer allows the users to schedule workflows to be executed at predetermined times or specific recurring intervals. Additionally, users may use Ultrix Designer to publish their workflows to the Ultrix gallery where others can have access running to them. Let's talk about the engine. The Ultrix engine executes the workflows that are built in the Ultrix Designer, provides high speed data processing and analytics functionality, and produces the output. The engine supports direct connections to various data sources for accessing the data and then processes it in memory during the execution of the workflow. The engine can be entirely self-contained in an Ultrix designer deployment, scaled across an organization via an Ultrix server deployment, or deployed in the cloud via the Ultrix analytics gallery. Another component that I might mention is everything that makes up what's below this blue bar here called the service layer. The Ultrix service allows the Ultrix engine to be deployed across multiple servers, providing a highly scalable architecture for the scheduling, management, and execution of analytic workflows. The Ultrix service uses a controller worker architecture where one server acts as a controller and manages the job queue, and others act as workers to perform the work. The service relies upon the server persistence tier to store information critical to the functioning of the service and also serves content and information to the gallery when it requests it. The final component worth discussing on this graphic is the gallery. The Alteryx gallery is a cloud or on-premise hosted application for publishing, sharing, and executing workflows. Alteryx offers the Alteryx analytics gallery where users can sign up and share workflows, apps, and macros publicly or with other selected users. Additionally, the Ultrix server deployment allows companies the ability to offer a private gallery to their internal users hosted on their own server infrastructure. Now, if we go into another level deeper, we can actually look at what happens inside the service layer. You'll three that, see that there are three main components, the controller, the worker, and the database, which is interchangeably used in many t spots in our documentation as persistence. The controller, found here in the center of the service layer, is responsible for the management of service settings and the delegation of work to the Ultrix service workers. If the local machine is configured to act as the controller, the controller component is available for configuration. Only one machine may be enabled as a controller in a deployment. The second component, the worker, is responsible for executing analytic workflows. There must be at least one machine enabled as a worker in order to execute workflows through the service. You may configure the same machine to be both controller and worker. The actual number of workers needed will depend upon the required performance in the system. If the local machine is configured to act as a worker, the worker component will be available for configuration. Finally, the database. The Ultrix server includes the persistence layer that uses to store information critical to the functioning of the service, such as application files, the job queue, and result data. The service supports two different mechanisms for persistence, either SQLite or MongoDB. For lightweight and local deployments, SQLite is adequate for most scheduling needs. For heavier usage, or if the Ultrix gallery is deployed, MongoDB must be used. So let's take a look at the service layer behavior and see what happens. Here we have an example of what happens inside the service layer when a job is requested and passed to the service. In this case, the job being represented can originate from either the designer via the scheduler 
or from the gallery. When the job requested is sent through the service layer, it is immediately directed to the controller component. When looking at the scheduler UI, an option can be viewed that designates the controller to send the job to. If this is a single node deployment the, and the controller is hosted on the machine doing the scheduling, it will likely read as local machine. However, if the controller is located on a separate node of the server, the controller can be connected through the scheduling UI. If an organization has multiple instances of Alteryx server, the analyst scheduling the workflow from the designer can designate which controller to connect through. The controller, in turn, queues the job to wait for its turn for execution by the next queue worker. The queue is an important concept when we're talking about server. Depending on the server configuration, a certain amount of jobs can be processed at a single moment. For the sake of this example, we will say that the server has been allowed a maximum of two simultaneous workflows to be processed at one single time. Any other jobs being requested of the server will wait in the job queue until one of the other processing jobs has completed. For the job queue, the ordering of jobs is on a first come first serve basis. There is no precedence between the jobs that are being queued from scheduler or being queued from the gallery. Now for the controller worker interaction, the service layer is really a nearly one-sided relationship between the worker and controller. The behavior of the worker is to continually ping the controller asking if there's anything in the job queue available for processing. When asked for the job by the queue worker, the controller will scan the job queue for any pending jobs. If one is found, it will acknowledge to the worker that the job is available for processing, and the worker will utilize the Alteryx engine for high-speed data processing and analytics functionality and produce an output. Once complete, the results will be returned to the database. The gallery or the scheduler will display results once they have been stored within that database. When talking about scalability within the server, there are three main ways that it can scale. It can scale through either the worker, the database, or the controller. Most typically, when users are experiencing long processing workflows and large queue weights, they will consider scaling out the worker node to handle more concurrent processes. There are two more considerations when scaling, either scaling up or scaling out. We can assign each worker to run more workflows at a time or designate more nodes to run more concurrent processes. The Alteryx recommendations is to assign each worker node the number of workflows simultaneous for processing where it is equal to half of the number of the machine's physical cores. For example, if my node that is currently acting as my worker has four cores, the recommendation would be to allow a max of two simultaneous workflows to be running on that node at any given time. More concurrent workflows can be assigned to each node, but the server will typically see a degradation in performance due to the computing slash input output competition between all the processing workflows. The second way to scale is through more database nodes. If data redundancy is needed, consider scaling out the database nodes. The default embedded MongoDB is contained within a single node, but once more nodes are needed, MongoDB will begin to be user managed instead of embedded. For creating replica sets or database sharding, it is recommended to review MongoDB's guidelines and documentation for scaling the database. The final piece of scaling is gallery. The final point of scalability is the gallery node. The primary reason to scale a gallery could be redundancy. However, Another reason for scaling gallery is experiencing high amounts of traffic through the web browser. The user experience of gallery could be hindered by the fact that it becomes latent and slow. If the gallery is slow to navigate, consider adding a gallery node with a load balancer in front of it. The load balancer will direct traffic based on the gallery node health. For more information, visit downloads.alteryx.com slash documentation to download the Alteryx server and installation document. Any of the information presented here today is available in the document and more. Thank you.